The E6B calculator is far from extinct and is considered required equipment by most pilots. During flight training, you'll learn to plan your cross-country flights first by hand and use the E6B each step of the way. You'll also find it to be a handy companion when studying for the FAA knowledge test, and you can bring your electronic E6B into the testing center to use during the actual test. The electronic E6B is equally useful when in the airplane to help determine actual winds aloft, true airspeed, fuel burn, and descent planning. In this segment, we're going to take a look at how to use the calculator and its core aviation functions. We'd suggest you have the E6B manual handy, either the print version included in the box or the digital PDF from the resources section of this course. This includes sample problems for each of the functions. The Sporty Z6B also comes with a quick reference card attached to the cover of the calculator. This serves as a cheat sheet to help you determine the required input and expected outputs for each function. The controls on the Sporty Z6B are thoughtfully laid out and provide quick access to each of the aviation functions. These functions are organized into six groups and accessed by the buttons at the top of the keypad, heading ground speed and pressure density altitude, speed, required, wind, flight, and weight and balance. To use one of the functions, first press its respective group button, which will declutter the screen and only show the available functions that are part of that group. Don't worry if you select the wrong group at first, as you can tap another group at any point. Then, use the up or down arrow on the right side of the screen to highlight the desired function, which will be flashing. Lastly, press the Enter key to start using the function. We'll review how and when to use many of these functions later in this segment. The 20 conversion options are listed in yellow text above the gray arithmetic buttons on the E6B. Let's say, for example, you wanted to convert 50 degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius. First, enter the number 50 using the keypad. Then press the button with the yellow text CONV to activate the conversion mode. And then press the button which corresponds to the desired conversion. In this case, the Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion corresponds with the C, clear button, and pressing that will display the desired result of 10 degrees Celsius. The conversion function is also used to activate the secondary functions printed in yellow above the top half of the buttons. For example, you'll see yellow light bulb icons above the up and down arrows, which are used to enable or disable screen backlighting. To turn on the backlighting, press the Conversion button and then the Up arrow. To turn off the backlighting, again press the Conversion button and then the Down arrow. You can use the standard arithmetic buttons at any time to perform basic math problems such as addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. The plus-minus key should be used when you need to make a number negative or positive. If a number is negative, a dash symbol will appear to the right of the number. Now that we've covered the basic operation and layout of the Sporty Z6B, let's take a closer look at the aviation functions. Here, we will only go over the most commonly used functions required for flight planning, en route navigation, and those which you will find useful when answering questions on the FAA knowledge test. Let's start the planning process by calculating pressure and density altitude, which you'll need to do each time before using the takeoff and landing distance charts in your airplane's flight manual. First, tap the Heading Ground Speed and Pressure Density Altitude button at the top left corner of the E6B. This will then display the labels for the two functions that belong to that group. Use the down arrow to highlight the pressure density altitude function and tap Enter. When a function is activated, 
the E6B will display the first input field required for the selected calculation and flash the input label. In this case, IALT is flashing, which stands for Indicated Altitude. Since we want to know the pressure and density altitude for takeoff, enter the airport elevation of 843 feet for this scenario and press Enter. Next, the E6B prompts you to enter Barrow, which is the current altimeter setting in inches of mercury for your location, which for this scenario is 29.83 inches. When entering an altimeter setting, make sure to use the period key or you will end up with an input of 2,983. Next, the E6B prompts for the temperature in degrees Celsius. Enter the current temperature of 7 degrees and press Enter to finalize the calculation. The E6B now displays the results, as indicated by the PALT and DALT labels flashing and the numerical results to the right of the labels, standing for pressure altitude and density altitude, respectively. Another commonly used function is the crosswind, headwind, and tailwind calculator. This will calculate headwind and crosswind components for a particular runway based on the current wind conditions and is useful during both pre-flight planning and when in the air while approaching to land in an airport. First, select the wind group and use the arrow keys to navigate to the crosswind headwind function and press enter. Input the reported wind direction of 320 degrees, press Enter, and then type in the wind speed of 12 knots, and press Enter again. Next, enter the planned runway number, which should always be a value between 1 and 36. We'll enter runway 36 for this scenario and press Enter to finalize the calculation. The E6B now displays the results, which is again represented by the flashing labels. For this scenario, the crosswind component is 7.7 .7 knots, and the negative symbol to the right of the number indicates it is a left crosswind. No symbol next to the number indicates a crosswind from the right. The headwind component is 9.2 knots. The negative symbol confirms it is a headwind, and the absence of a negative symbol indicates it is a tailwind. The E6B really excels when it comes time to plan a cross-country flight. For this scenario, we're going to use three different functions in a specific order to illustrate how Sporty's E6B can automatically transfer the results from one function and use it as the input for another function. Specifically, we'll be using the heading ground speed function, leg time, and required fuel functions. We'll start with the heading ground speed function, which is used to determine the heading to fly based on the winds aloft forecast and the resulting ground speed for a planned flight. First, select the heading ground speed group and press Enter to activate that function. Input the forecast winds aloft for the planned altitude, which is 250 degrees. Press Enter and then input the forecast wind speed of 15 knots and press Enter. The next input field is the true course, which you would determine after measuring the planned flight with a plotter on a sectional chart. For this scenario, input a true course of 130 degrees and press Enter. The final input is true airspeed, which comes out to 112 knots from the cruise performance chart in the airplane POH. This function yields three results, with the first being a computed ground speed of 118.7 knots. The true heading to fly is 137 degrees, which factors in the displayed wind correction angle of 7 degrees. The next computation you'll likely want to make is flight time based on the ground speed you just calculated. To do this, select the Flight group and then choose 
the leg time function. Enter the leg distance of 45 nautical miles and press Enter. You'll then see that the previously computed ground speed of 118.7 knots was automatically carried over from the previous heading ground speed calculation. Confirm the entry by pressing Enter. The calculated time for covering 45 nautical miles at a ground speed of 118.7 knots is 22 minutes and 45 seconds. The final calculation you'll want to make in this series is fuel required for the trip. Select the required group and press Enter to activate the fuel required function. You'll see that the previously calculated leg time of 22 minutes and 45 seconds was automatically transferred into the time field here. Press Enter and input your estimated fuel burn per hour of 8.5 gallons per hour. Our final result is 3.2 gallons of fuel required for this leg. Another pre-flight calculation you'll want to perform before each flight is endurance, or how long you can stay in the air based on fuel load and the burn rate. Select the flight group and use the arrow keys to select the endurance function. Enter the total amount of fuel on board the airplane in gallons, which for this example is 53 gallons, and press Enter. Next, you'll enter the fuel flow in gallons per hour. Again, you'll see that the E6B carried over the fuel flow value entered from the previous function of 8.5 gallons per hour. If you want to change this, simply type in a new value and press Enter. Based on the entered values, the E6B calculates the endurance for the planned flight to be 5 hours and 24 minutes. While en route, you will find it helpful to calculate your actual true airspeed to confirm your airplane is performing as determined in your pre-flight planning. Select the Speed group and use the arrow buttons to select the actual true airspeed function. Enter the approximate pressure altitude equivalent for your cruise altitude and press Enter. You can use the pressure density altitude function first to determine the exact pressure altitude. Next, enter the temperature in degrees Celsius as shown on your outside air temperature gauge and press Enter. Lastly, enter the current calibrated airspeed, which can be found by taking the indicated airspeed and correcting it with the calibration chart from your POH. The top flashing result, TAS, represents your true airspeed based on the current conditions. You'll see that the E6B also calculates the Mach number and density altitude. You can determine your current ground speed while en route by first logging how many minutes it takes you to travel a known distance between landmarks on the ground. After figuring this out, select the Speed group and select the first function ground speed. Input the distance traveled in nautical miles, press Enter, and then enter the time it took to travel that distance. When entering time, first enter the hours, zero in this case, and then press the colon key. Next, enter the minutes value, 17 for this example, and press the colon key again. Last, enter the seconds. 30 for this example, and then press Enter to end the calculation. The E6B will display the computed ground speed in the middle of the screen. You can also determine the actual winds aloft speed and direction while en route to check it against the forecast values you used during the planning phase on the ground. Select the wind group and then the wind function. Enter your current course, also known as your ground track, which will be shown on your GPS navigator. Next, enter your current true airspeed 
which will be carried over if you recently completed the actual true airspeed calculation. Enter your current ground speed, which again can be determined using the E6B's ground speed function or read directly from your GPS navigator. Finally, enter your current heading and press Enter. The E6B displays the results at the top of the screen, showing the calculated wind direction in degrees and speed in knots. Another useful in-flight function of the Sporty's E6B is calculating the distance you've flown, or will fly, based on known time and ground speed. For example, if you have a ground speed of 98 knots, how many miles will you travel in 30 minutes? To calculate this, select the Flight Group, and then the Distance Flown function at the top of the list. Enter a ground speed of 98 knots and the time of 30 minutes. Remember to use the colon key to separate hours, minutes, and seconds, and press Enter. The distance result is shown at the top of the screen, which is 49 miles for this scenario. While you can't use it on the FAA knowledge test, Sporties also offers a mobile app version of the E6B for iPad, iPhone, and Android devices. It includes the same aviation functions and conversions as the handheld version, but you'll find it more convenient to access when away from your flight bag and if you're already using a tablet in the cockpit.